Hello, welcome to Verbling. I'm Teacher Oakley, and for the next hour here on Verbling, we are going to practice our English in an open-ended uh, conversation class about one of my favorite topics, which is food. Yay, food. Food, cooking, shopping, um, different foods, fast foods, street food, uh, wide open and an enormous topic. And we'll just see where the conversation takes us as we proceed. I, I will give you any feedback as to any errors you make with your English regarding pronunciation, sentence construction, or I might suggest vocabulary, what have you. But uh, just relax and enjoy the conversation. Uh, hello, Michael. Hello, Clay. Hey, Good how morning. you doing? Good morning. Doing well. And you? I'm cool. I'm good. I, I'm kind of regretting scheduling this class for right now because usually I eat my lunch right now and uh, I am starving and my wife is cooking right now <laughs> and it smells absolutely terrific. I'm, I'm very hungry but at, at, the, at the end of this class because for me now it's 6 a.m. I uh -huh. just uh, wake up and do this class at a, and at the end of the class I will have breakfast. So yeah. it's more or less the same than you but, but not for lunch, it's for, for breakfast for me. All right. <laughs> Okay, well, good luck to both of us in that case. <laughs> All right. Uh, okay, and let me welcome Vladimiro. Yeah. Okay. H how should I address you? Vladimiro? Or J just Vlad? Just Vlad. Just Vlad. Vlad. Okay. Hi, Vlad. Uh, where are you from? I'm from Taiwan. Taiwan. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Uh, oh my goodness, uh, were you affected by the typhoon at all? Mm, just a little. Yeah, I, I, we, we have, we can we don't have to go to work on the, on the typhoon. Oh, yay! <laughs> okay. <laughs> all right. Uh, got the day off. <laughs> That's cool. Good for you, Vlad. <laughs> okay. But, uh, all right. No, that's a that's a net positive. Okay. Anyway, glad to have you here, Vlad. Nice to meet you. Talk to you in a, talk to you in a little bit. Okay, let me also welcome Shan. Hi, Shan. Good to see you again. Hi, Oakley. How are you? Oh, I'm fine. Thank you. Uh, glad you could join us. And uh, Francisco is also with us. Hi, Francisco. Welcome, welcome. Hi, teacher. How are you? I'm great. Thanks. Uh, and Andres. And Andres. Yeah. Yeah. Hello. Hi. How are you? Hi. Fine. How are you doing? I'm hungry. And this class is just going to make <laughs> that worse. But uh, here we go. I'm going to torture myself, I suppose. All right. I'm just going to take turns. Facilitate going around the class from person to person, facilitating a little discussion about food. So, Michael, you were the first in the class, so let's start with you. Michael, do yes. you like to cook? Do you like to cook? Can you cook? No, too much. I'm a very, <laughs> I'm a terrible cook. You are. You know that. You know that. Yeah, you know that I, I'm living in San Sebastian, and San Sebastian is a very, very gastronomic city. I think this is the second city in the world that has the most Michelin stars. Do you know this? This, ah. uh, yeah. The first one I think that is Kyoto in Japan, and the, if you take into account the 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 measure of the city, because it's a small city, but we have a lot of stars. That so. The first one is Kyoto, and the second one is San Sebastian. So all my friends that come, that are, come here, or, or or when I stay with my friends uh, abroad, they thought that they think that I'm a very good cook because I live here, ah. but I, I'm a disaster. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, I know how that is. Yeah, okay. Because but you live have, in a certain place, I have, stereotypes. Yeah, I, yeah. But I have a lot of good cooks around me, my wife, my, my mother. So it's very easy to, to, to have good good things to do it. Well, I, because of what I have to say, nice use of vocabulary, by the way, gastronomic, an adjective, uh, um, rather sophisticated adjective to describe things related to food and culinary, uh, in the culinary field. Michelin stars, of course, is a well-known rating for restaurants. So I, because of what you said, I have to ask you the follow-up question. Do you like to go out, and and do you have a chance to, to actually sample some of these Michelin star <laughs> restaurants? Mm, yes and no, because I like food, but I don't like to to spend a lot of money uh, eating. And now it's a, it's like a trend here to go to these very very expensive restaurants once a year. Or um, but you have to spend a lot of money. It's all, more or less. 200 euros only for one meal is so, something crazy for me. This is is, but it's uh, something fashionable now in this moment, and a lot of people. Um, we have a lot of tourists in this city, and a lot, a lot of most of the tourists come here to eat, and they pay a lot of money. It's something crazy for me, yeah. but but we you you have. Some other restaurant that they aren't so expensive and you can eat very very well too. So yeah. for, I don't I don't need to to spend a lot of money to do it very okay. well. So yeah. Okay. Uh, and you know that in this moment, good cooks are very good marketing managers too, and they they appear on TV and they and they. Create a very big business about around cooking. So yes, the 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 marketing of uh, uh, restaurants and gourmet foods has definitely changed a lot in the last 10, 20 years, and you see a lot more chef programs on TV and a lot more publicity in magazines and periodicals. Absolutely, they've gotten good at PR. Yeah. Uh, I have to share with you, I have to be upfront with you in this discussion that uh, I am a graduate of culinary, uh, culinary school and I, oh. I have a degree in culinary arts and I was a oh. chef for many years. Oh, and, congratulations. <laughs> and you're, you're talking about spending 200 euro. The, I worked in a French restaurant in America oh. for, for many, quite a few years. I love that job actually. I love cooking French food. Uh, the record that I recall, because we had a lovely wine cellar with really uh, Aubriaz and uh, Chateau Margaux and lovely, lovely wines. They were very expensive. Um, the record that I remember, we had a, a millionaire who shall remain nameless who actually owns an airline company. He spent $12,000 on one meal. Uh, yeah, <laughs> for four people. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah. But think about think about the tip the waiter got though. Woohoo! <laughs> he was happy. Oh yeah, yeah. boy. Yeah. <laughs> yes. I, I I I write in the chat books this uh, link. Is is the Bass Culinary Center? Is a nice. uh, a school on on the, on the yeah. at the university here and. A lot of students from different places around the world come here to, to study cooking. I have this, definitely this heard of it. Mm -hmm. and, 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 more, and it's very, very expensive to, to st st study in this, in this uh, school too. Yeah, you're so right. yeah, most of them are rich people. and it's Culinary schools are expensive. In Europe and the United States, very. You're absolutely right about that. I was lucky because I went in an, in an apprentice program, so I was working for a large hotel resort, and they were paying 
a good portion of my um, tuition. So I, I got, I'm not rich, but I'm lucky. <laughs> I, I managed to get basically a grant in an apprenticeship program working with a master chef. So I lucked out, honestly. Uh, okay, let, let's uh, let me talk to Vlad for, for a moment here. Uh, well, first let me welcome Elio. Hi, Elio. Welcome to the class. Hey there. How are hey. you? Hey. Uh, I'm fine, thanks. Hey. How are you? Cool. Uh, I'm good. Hungry or by the minute, but uh, I'm, I'm good. Um, talk to you in a little bit. Yeah, sure. Uh, let me, sure. Let me talk to Vlad. Uh, Vlad, do you... Do you enjoy cooking? Do you enjoy yeah, I never cook. You I never, never cook. Never, cook. In life. <laughs> never in your life. Yeah. Okay. What is the fanciest, most elaborate, most gourmet meal that you ever remember having? Mm. I think it is. Uh, one time, my mom came me to a restaurant called Little Italy in my area. It's uh -huh. pretty good. Yeah, okay. pretty special, pretty different from the food we usually eat. And mm -hmm. they use a lot of spice and a lot of... Uh, we usually eat rice for every meal, but at that restaurant we don't. Yeah, oh, oh, we didn't pass we didn't. tense. Yeah. Mm hmm Okay. Do you recall the dish that you ordered? Do you remember? Maybe not. It, yeah, yeah, not. Yeah, it, yeah, it's, it's in English. I don't remember. Okay. I, yeah. yeah, I understand. Okay. Was it any special occasion? Was it your birthday or just you have a really nice mom? <laughs> Yeah, I think just it's just a random occasion. Okay, all right, lucky you. All right, okay, very interesting, Vlad. I I have to share with you. I'm an American, but I live in the Philippines, so yeah. I understand a couple of things that you said. One, having rice every day. In fact, every meal here in the Philippines, you have rice at breakfast, rice at lunch, rice at dinner. It yeah. doesn't matter. If you're going to eat a peanut butter sandwich, you have peanut butter sandwich and rice. <laughs> yes. That's so Everything. Uh, right. I, I understand that. I know where you're coming from, man. Um, the other thing I understand is that when I asked for a very fancy restaurant, you mentioned an Italian restaurant. And, and this is very a, a little bit of a culture shock for me. In the United States, you have very fancy Italian restaurants, northern Italian cuisine, and lovely, lovely, I love Italian food. And then you have mom and pop, very small restaurants that are very cheap. Get yourself some spaghetti bolognese, you know, pizza, what have you, and they're really cheap. It's one of the cheapest ways to eat in the United States. So there's a wide range, a wide variety of Italian restaurants in the United States. Here in Asia, and I've traveled not only in the Philippines, but around, you know, um, the area, Jakarta, Hong Kong, Singapore, Italian food is seen as being extremely gourmet, and it is the highest priced food there is. Uh, do, is that true in Taiwan? Is that is it considered really, really gourmet, really? Yeah, but it's considered really okay. Gourmet, but I think French food is the yeah, highest. French food. Right. French and Italian are way up there. You're right. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I find that to be... That was a big surprise for me. That, uh, Italian food, its reputation as being high, highly gourmet food. And it's not cheap. Even pizza is not cheap here. Uh, yeah. Okay, uh, thanks, Vlad. I'll talk to you a little bit later, actually. Let me talk to Shan for a minute. Shan. 
Yep. What is your all-time favorite dish? Uh, well, uh, definitely it would be a biryani. So, sorry. Uh, it's called biryani. Let me type here so we can understand that. Okay. Terrific. It's called biryani. Biryani. Okay. Oh, so please now <laughs> practice your English description. Bring uh, it on. Okay. It's a, it's a made up rice, and you can add chicken or uh, mutton or any kind of non-veg item here. The main ingredients is the spice. So it it, it, it takes like uh, four to five hours to process fully. So when it's fully cooked, it's aroma is very, very, very high. And it could, you could just feel like that you are eating something like very spicy. But not that spicy, it's light. Spicy in terms of aroma, like mm -hmm. smell kind of thing. So I, I, I like that dish. And okay. luckily, when I came here, I got a restaurant, a Indian restaurant nearby my area. So whenever I got the chance, I go, th go there and whether I take food there or sometimes I uh, get food from there or to go sometime. Okay. Terrific. Uh, okay, a little feedback for the English. Normally, okay, it's it's not wrong, but you said mm -hmm. it takes four to five hours to process. Process is so impersonal. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. To prepare, usually we use okay, okay, we yeah. prepare food, so it takes four to mm -hmm. five hours to prepare. Is a more normal co-location when we're talking about food. Mm -hmm. um, you might. Uh, you, you might consider using the adjective delicate when you're talking about not an overpowering spice, okay, mm -hmm. but a delicate aroma, a delicate, delicately spiced, or even subtle. All right. Yeah, subtle. So, yeah. We'll get fine. Yeah. Okay. Subtle, a uh, subtle spice that you can definitely taste, but they kind of creep up on you, and they're very distinct flavors like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, I'm gonna have to check this out, man. Biryani. Bir biryani. Do I have the pronunciation correct? Yeah, biryani. Biryani. Okay. Well, I might have to do some experimenting. I love to experiment <laughs> with food. I, I do. Go ahead, go ahead. Go crazy. I, I have I don't care, man. I'll make um I'll, I'll make kimchi ice cream. I don't care, man. <laughs> but process process of the particular food is a little complicated, like uh, but uh -huh. uh, the ingredients and all the recipes are available online so you can follow. Okay. All right. Well, you, you can bet I'll be checking that out. All right. Let me talk to Francisco for a moment. Francisco. Yes, sure. All right. A question for you. Do you cook very much? Uh, no, not really, teacher. The only okay. one who cooks here is my wife. <laughs> All right. H have you ever attempted to cook for your wife? Uh, yes, once. Uh, uh, once, but but I failed, teacher. <laughs> <laughs> what happened? Can you tell me? Okay. Well, the food uh, uh, was burnt. Burnt? <laughs> That's yeah. pretty clear. Okay. Uh, all right. The food was burnt. Okay, you're using a passive. The food was burnt by you, I assume. All right. Total failure. What were you trying to prepare? Uh, I was trying to prepare some some Mexican food, uh, enchiladas, oh. beer Mexico. Oh yeah. Uh, it's hard to do it, so you you have to to be very careful with preparing preparing food. Mm -hmm. So I'm not so patient to prepare food. Okay. As a matter of fact. No joke. Uh, I made enchiladas for my family for dinner Sunday night. Really? Oh, yeah. Oh. Refried beans and some rice and 
great. Yeah, yeah, it was great. <laughs> uh, yeah, it was. As a matter of fact, oh, I'm so getting hungry right now. Okay. <laughs> uh, why were you trying to prepare dinner for for your wife? A special romantic evening? Well, yeah. Well, it, it was an special special date. So, so I I figured that, that I had to prepare the food. Mm -hmm. But unfortunately, I couldn't do it. <laughs> okay. Well, uh, I, I kind of bring this up because in American culture, uh, although we have an expression in, in, in English-speaking culture, the way to a man's heart is through his stomach. Okay. Yeah about women, so women should be able to cook, and uh, okay, this is a classic proverb, actually. However, to share with you, if you ever are interested in an American girl, cook for her. This is the classic romantic move, it's part of your moves, man. Okay. You, you, you make, you create a beautiful candlelight dinner for a girl, it really impresses the heck out of them. Uh, okay. Or at least... It, yeah, uh, at least American women it does. Uh, yeah, they love that. They fall for that one every time. <laughs> We're all men here. Okay, all right, all right. Don't tell. It's a secret. Okay. All right. Andres. Hello. Hi. Andres, do you ever do the food shopping? For yourself, for your family, I, I I don't know what your situation is, but do you ever go food shopping? Uh, to go to to, to a place to go to 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 buy food. Yeah, that's right. Uh, go to a place to buy yeah. food. Yeah, okay. I've I've, uh, I've uh, bought food for my family. For example, I drive to to a to a place of the city and and find and try to find the best uh, option to to buy some good food. For example, a nice pizza <laughs> uh, uh, or pasta or uh, rice, I like I like uh, the rice a lot. Um, okay. Or even a soup. Okay, uh, here you're, in Colombia. Okay, go ahead. Here in Colombia, where 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 I live, uh, the soups are very popular. So mm -hmm. I like, for example, a soup called uh, ajiaco. That is a soup based on, a, on potatoes, a different kind of potatoes, and and uh, some chicken, uh, and it tastes so good. <laughs> okay. Do you, uh, Colombia is a hot country. Do you have any cold soups, or are all soups hot? Soups hot. Soups hot. Soups uh, are always even, hot. Even, okay. yeah, even in the in the places in Colombia though, where where it's hot, yeah, the people um, eat the the soup, the hot soup. Okay, hot temperature. I I, I, I don't I don't I don't know uh, cold cold soups. <laughs> yeah, they exist. Oh. Uh, bisques. You have a cold blueberry bisque. Vichyssoise, gazpacho. Oh, okay. I yeah. don't know. It. I don't know them. Uh, yeah, sure. Um, and they can be delicious. Uh, okay, Andreas. Now, we mentioned hot when we were talking about hot temperature, obviously. Yeah. But in English, sometimes it's confusing because we also use hot in English to mean spicy. Oh, it okay. Mean, it can mean either, actually. No, I was talking about temperature. 
But uh, I, I want to ask you about spicy. In your opinion, do you think Colombian food is relative to other cuisines? Do you think Colombian food is spicy, or do you think it's hot? Uh, uh, it's the Colombian, Colombian food is not spicy. Really? Okay. Really. So here it's not pop, it's not common to to eat uh, hot and, and or spicy food. Uh, uh, the spicy is is uh, is always in this on the side. Ah. And, uh, okay. And if if you want, you can put the spicy on to your to your food, but it's not common. The the food uh, um, comes. Uh, with the spicy. Okay. Comes uh, with spice or spicy is the adjective. Spice. Ah, okay. The spice is, is, uh, is yeah. the noun. That's right. Okay. Very good. That's right. All right. When we put food on the side, uh, I mean, we all know about having, you know, ketchup at McDonald's or you could salt and pepper shakers is fairly common all, all around the world. Maybe hot sauce. And in some places, yeah. maybe soy sauce uh, would be served on the side, or chili sauce. Uh, when these things are are on the side, sometimes red pepper flakes you can sprinkle on your food. Whatever, any of these things, when they're served on the side, and you can add them as you like, they're called condiments. Condiments. Okay. Yeah, extras used for flavor. Also, things like mayonnaise and mustard, ketchup. These are cond. These are called condiments, or or it can be anything else. On you know, salt and pepper on this. Are, they're also considered condiments. Okay. So, yeah, when you can add flavorings, uh, yeah, they're called condiments. Okay. Thank you. That was interesting, Elio. Okay. Let me talk to you for a bit. Hey. Hey. Uh, okay. Uh, Elio, when, when is the last time you went out to a restaurant? The last time when I, when I went to a restaurant, uh, I think it was maybe one month ago, uh, a Japanese restaurant. In, uh, really? Uh, yeah, in, uh, in Miami, actually. Uh, I went there with some friends, and uh, we tried Japanese food. But actually, uh, I like Japanese food, but it's not my favorite one. Uh, mm -hmm. I prefer other kind of food. Uh, uh, for example, uh, I love Chinese food, and I also love uh, my own my own uh, national food, uh, which is Mexican. Mm -hmm. uh, Me too. <laughs> yeah, but you know, all of the above. It's, it's yeah. Something weird for me uh, because uh, here, uh, right now I'm living in California and I will stay here until December. But uh, many people here, living here, think that uh, burritos and fajitas are Mexican food, and it's kind of funny because I get a. Uh, mad every time I hear that <laughs> because it's not true that's not Mexican food that's kind of American Mexican food but uh, <laughs> if you go to Mexico you probably uh, won't find burritos there there aren't burritos in Mexico yeah um, okay. and it's kind of weird for me yeah. Uh, well, because, don't, yeah? don't take it don't take it personally. It's the same. We do the same thing in America with Chinese food. There, what Americans consider Chinese food, you would never ever find in China. I know, but, but uh, I when when I was living in Canada, uh, I uh, I was living in a, a student residence. Is it correct to say that? I student mean, residence or dormitory, yeah. either one. Sure. Yeah, I was. And um, we usually uh, have meals together, and I usually have meals with the other guys, and mm -hmm. uh, we were hanging out, and uh, I always get mad when the people, uh, or when the menu uh, include uh, Mexican food, and they uh, served, or they 
uh, I don't know how to say that. But uh, the menu sure. uh, yeah. had burritos and fajitas, and uh, I don't know. Uh, I I I feel I felt kind of angry with uh, the cooking style because <laughs> that's no, that wasn't Mexican food. Yeah. So it's okay. Uh, don't take it personally, because Americans do that. Uh, with Italian not in America. Food, yeah. Chinese food, Mexican food. There's quite a few styles of food that Americans put their own spin on it, and they it's similar, but they change things slightly. There's not much difference between a burrito and an enchilada, really. The way Amer Americans prepare it, that is. Yeah, it's kind of the same. Yeah. Uh, I think my favorite kind of food uh, is Chinese food. I definitely love it. Uh, yeah. Uh, Chinese food? Yeah, real Chinese food is awesome, actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, you know, China's a big country, so if you're talking about Mandarin food from Beijing and you're talking about Sichuan, uh, Hunan food from the southern part, they are completely two different animals. You, you might as well be talking about Italian food as opposed to Japanese food. They're completely different. It's really amazing. Oh, I see. Yeah. Uh, I see. Well, anyway, uh, I love it. Yeah, I, I do too. Do, you, you mentioned last time you went out, you um, went to a Japanese restaurant. Do you eat sushi? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that's the most famous kind uh, of Japanese sure. food. Um, yeah. But they had another kind of food. I think my friends uh, ate soup, Japanese food. Mm -hmm. Japanese soup. And I, I didn't try it, but it looked good. Uh... Uh, yeah, well, uh, their most famous soup is um, is uh, is uh, miso soup, classic. Uh, they do have other soups, but that's the most uh, classic style. Ha, have you ever been to a uh, okay um, teppanyaki? Do you know what that is, Elio? Yeah. Teppanyaki. Uh, teppanyaki. No, I know. Say, I know what it is. I don't know what it is. Oh, okay, it's a style of Japanese cooking. Has anybody been to a teppanyaki restaurant? Yeah. Yeah? Who's talking? Andres? Andres. Is that you? Yeah, Andres. Teppanyaki is, is that the, the, it's when the, the cook uh, do a show with the food um, while he's cooking. Yeah, awesome. And, so <laughs> yeah, fun. it's awesome. Yeah, it is. <laughs> Yeah. Okay, that's so much fun. And if you've never done this and you have a chance, I highly recommend it to everyone. Absolutely, it's the style of eating where there's a big flat grill and people sit around the grill, and the chef uh, is at one end and he's cooking things and he's throwing, juggling his knives and chopping things like, and he picks up a scallop or a shrimp and he throws it with a knife across the table right into your mouth. <laughs> <laughs> it's amazing. It's totally cool. He's like literally throwing things in the air, going, <laughs> cutting it while it's in the air. Just crazy, crazy, crazy. And Flipping break, the knife around. Yeah, and break, awesome. the, break the eggs with the, with the knife. Yeah, all right. <laughs> break the eggs with the knife. It's a show, right? It is a show. Uh, dinner and a show, all in one. It's great. And the food is terrific, so you can't lose, really. Uh, yeah, uh, lots of fun uh, to go to that kind of a restaurant. Uh, okay. Um, Michael, let me, uh, let me talk to you. Uh, okay, you, you had mentioned earlier that there's a number of Michelin star restaurants. Terrific. Is there a wide variety of Cultural styles, um, ethnic foods. No, no, no. I think that I think that all all of them are uh, Basque uh, cooking okay. restaurants. I think that yeah, it's the only kind of 
cooking that you can find in this uh, restaurant in Man, in Man City. That only the the restaurant that has that have uh, Michelin stars, but we have a <clears throat> a lot of uh, different cultures cooking restaurants and mm -hmm. but, yeah. But I, I, I will I will tell you a, a, a recent a recent history that I had the last week because I stayed in England. Do you know that we are a, a cycling family and we are members of this uh, hospit. Uh, we are members of uh, this. I put in I write in the chat room. It's a this is a hospitality club for cyclists. So when you are in this club, you can go. To, yeah, yeah, you can go to a, a different place and ask local cyclists to host you in their house. And I did this last week, and I went to England. But the the thing that I was asking for host me, but I prepare the dinner. So I every every wow. din every night I prepare a, a potato omelette, and I had the the, the the opportunity to, to speak English with with their uh, during I was cooking the, the this uh, omelette and it was a very very good experience for me so it was a cycling gastronomic experience. Nice. So, yeah. <laughs> Great. Uh, uh, and I, I, I and I taste the local food too and you know in England fish and chips is the yeah. the main. Uh, the, no, I think that the, the, the now the most important uh, thing that you can eat there is, is curry. But, <laughs> yeah. Yes, but there are a lot of fish and chips restaurants, and I and I went to a. It was for me a very good experience too. I I went to a um, a path for cyclists to the free will. This was the name of this restaurant, the Free Will uh, Path, and mm, it was a path, a normal path. But at the same time, when you were eating or when you were drinking something, you had a, a next to the restaurant. It was a, a place to repair the bikes. So it was a, <laughs> a good, <laughs> another good cyclist gastronomy experience too. Uh, great. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, fish and chips being the stereotypical Brit food, uh, British food. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and uh, frankly, England used to have a, I say used to have, uh, a, a very bad stereotypical reputation. Yeah, for but it's food. changing. It's changing I, a lot. I, exactly. And, and, and yeah. in my head, it, it, I, I, I imagine a very... who. Urban, urban England, and most of the time I went, I went along the countryside, a very rural places, and they have lots and lots of apples, pears, uh, wild fruits, uh, blackberries, and they. I stayed in, and most of the houses that I stayed, they were vegetarian, vegetarian, vegetarian people, mm -hmm. and they. They eat very, very clean, no fast food, very fresh vegetables, and so mm -hmm. I think. And and they 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 told me that the last ten years is uh, happen a cooking revolution in England, and things are changing a lot. Yeah, uh, you see all these uh, British chefs now on television. Chef Ramsay. Yeah. Maybe yeah. the most famous, but there's a whole bunch of them. Uh, Oliver, I, I can think of a few of them. Um, as we said earlier, they, they're doing. They're, they got really good at PR, <laughs> and yeah. I think there's a bit of a culinary revolution in England yeah. right now, which is good. That's that's yeah. a good thing. Yeah. Did you have any typical English breakfast? While you they, you were there, uh, English or uh, Scottish maybe because they they I uh -huh. most of the most of the day I eat for breakfast porridge. Oh, okay, porridge. all uh, right. Well, that's that's healthy. Yeah, they it's very healthy, and I think that is from in Scotland. But most yeah. of the English people that I meet, they they had for breakfast porridge. Okay, uh, and all right. very good, very good. Uh, Jam, very uh, uh, house-made jam. Just yeah. take the fruits from the garden and, pre and prepare these jams. And 
Yeah, for me, yeah. I think that, that, that now maybe it was only my experience, but uh, I I come back home with a totally different image of the English cooking. Yeah. Okay, all right. Yeah, the the traditional or stereotypical again uh, English breakfast is like enormous. Uh, you got the eggs and beans bacon, and potatoes, yeah. bacon and sausage and. Yeah. Yeah, it's ridiculously enormous and fattening. Okay, um, let me uh, talk to Vlad for a minute. Uh, Vlad, you, if I come to Taiwan, what is the one? Speaking of stereotypical foods or, or national foods, what do I need to try? What do I need to eat in Taiwan? Dumplings, definitely dumplings. 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 Okay. Steamed, fried, steam, steam dumpling. There's a very famous, uh, chain steam dump dumpling shop shop in Ta restaurant in Taiwan here, and you can find it in Taipei 101 or any mm -hmm. big department store. There's any anywhere, everywhere. The department store. Yeah. Really. Uh, are are dumplings street food? Can you yeah. buy dumplings on the street? Is that common? Yeah, but it's not that like good compared to the the restaurant I just tell you. Ah, okay. Yeah. All right. It's very famous. Um, here in the Philippines, show my show pie uh, styles of dumplings and, and other ones as well are very common street food here. Uh, okay. Actually. Very easy to find. They're everywhere, actually. Yeah, you have an interesting mix of street food. Oh, what other other kinds of street food can I find in Taipei, for example? Mm, fried new fried noodle, like you guys. Okay. Speak. Yeah. Fried rice everywhere. Fried rice everywhere. Okay. Yeah. I like fried rice, actually. Uh. Oh, okay. that's a lot. Right. Fried noodle with soup in it. With soup covered with it. Okay. And does, does everyone eat everything with chopsticks? Hmm. Is uh, that mostly, yes. Mostly, yes? Okay. Yes, it's true. <laughs> All right. Yeah, I, I need some more practice with my chopsticks. I. Do Philippine people use chopstick too? No. No. Uh, no, actually, that's an interesting question, Vlad. In the Philippines, okay, in American cuisine, you normally have at least a fork, uh, a knife, and a spoon. Yeah. Um, more, if you're going to have a more fancy meal, you may have a, a soup spoon, a dessert spoon, uh, a butter knife, a regular knife, a salad fork, a dinner fork, a dessert fork. Um, you could have several pieces of cutlery, it's called, or silverware otherwise. Cutlery um, for a very fancy meal, but at least a fork, a spoon, and a knife. Here in the Philippines, a spoon, a soup spoon, actually, not a regular size spoon. They use a soup spoon and a fork. And that's it. Unless you're eat many people eating at home, eating lunch at home with a family or whatever, just use their hands. They take whatever and they mix it with rice and just use their hands. And that's it. Wow. It's very common to just use your hands, even eating rice. Uh, yeah. <clears throat> but no, they don't they don't they have they're worse at using chopsticks than Americans, actually. Most Americans can use chopsticks. Because we try it out, we like to experiment. When we go eat Asian food in a restaurant, we try to use the chopsticks. Give it a try at least. But not, not here, not in Philippines. They really have no idea how to use yeah. chopsticks. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, my, my, I, yeah, whatever. I shouldn't say it, but I took my wife out for Chinese food and she's like, <laughs> it was like, you know. She's trying to pick things up, and the food is just flying up in the air. Ah! 
kind of funny. Anyway. Okay. Uh, Shan. How about you, Shan? Can you use Chopstick? No, I can't. <laughs> <laughs> you ever try? I've tried. I've tried a number of times, but I can't. <laughs> okay, you gave it a try at least. All yeah, right, I gave it a try. All right, well, good for you. Okay, that's great. <coughs> uh, Shannon, if I if I want to buy food, I want to make a nice dinner, so I want the best ingredients, the raw foods, the meat, the vegetables. Where should I shop? Where would I shop in in your area? In a supermarket, in a in a farmers market, in a wet market, where would I go? Yeah, uh, mainly we go to the farmers market where you can uh, get the fresh vegetables and the chicken and all the stuff. And if you need to store for a large quantity in a large quantity, then you can go Costco. So <laughs> Costco. Uh, yeah, there is a wholesale market. So you can uh, get a huge number of quantity here. Uh, okay. Not a huge number of quantity. You can just a huge quantity. Huge quantity, yeah. That's right. Of food, yeah. For those who don't know, the whole concept of Costco, Sam's Club, there's a few of these styles of... It's kind of like a supermarket, but it's kind of like wholesale. So you go buy things in bulk. All right. So, okay, if you want bathroom tissue, you don't buy four rolls of bathroom yeah. tissue. You, you, you buy 128. <laughs> Not like minimum, like twi minimum 20 pieces. Like. Uh, minimum 20 pieces. Well, there you go. Okay. So anything you buy, you're, you're buying in bulk, which means large quantities. Obviously, the advantage being that you get a better price. For quantity, yeah, that's clearly, right. yeah, okay. I haven't done that. There is a Costco in my city. I haven't been there in literally years. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll go give that a try. <laughs> go crazy. I don't know where I would store the food though. That's the problem. Um, yeah. Uh... Okay. Do okay. I have a qu another question, Shan. Mm -hmm. People in the Philippines. Less and less now because the economy is improving and more and more, and more people can uh, afford refrigerators and better food storage. So more and more people are buying food in quantity to save money. But the tradition here is basically you buy food every day what you're going to eat. Fresh food and you buy it that day before you actually eat it. In fact, there's many people that go around the streets selling even meat, fish, chicken, pork, what have you, or fresh fruits and vegetables, and you can buy them. They walking down the street six in the morning, and you buy food that you're going to cook for lunch. Mm -hmm. It's very common. How about in, in your country? Do people... In America, that's unheard of. You go shopping once a week, and you buy what you're going to use for the week, uh, and that's what everybody does. How about in your country? How, how do people shop for food? Uh, yeah, they prefer to buy fresh fruits and vegetables all the time, but now things have changed a lot due to the globalization. Everybody has the refrigerator in their homes. They right. store maximum kind of foods. But still, kind of like uh, uh, our older generation preferred to have uh, the fresh foods, or they prefer to cook every day, not store in the refrigerator and use yep. in next two or three days. So, right. but still, kind of reservations uh, is there to use or cook every day, or buy vegetables every day. But things are changing. Like nobody has that much of time now right like everybody is busy yeah what's so, the deal with globalization <laughs> how do we <laughs> end up with less time we're supposed to be more efficient as technology gets better and better instead we have less and less time what is the deal <laughs> I would like to know okay somebody explain that to me okay well thank you that's very interesting sounds very similar to life here in the Philippines actually uh, okay um, all right, 
Francisco, talk to you for a minute. Yes, sir. Uh, okay. Uh, you said your wife usually cooks for you. What is her best dish? Uh, well, uh, he he she cooks uh, some some food like enchiladas, uh, well, and uh, chilaquiles. Uh, sometimes they, she prepares uh, seafood. It is one of my of my favorite food. Uh, well, she does a lot of. Uh, she prepares a lot, a lot of food. Okay. Does she? Does your wife ever try to cook like Italian food or Chinese food or other? Uh, no, food? not really. Sure. Yeah. Only rice. She prepares rice and prepares other sort of things, but not. Not exactly Japanese or Chinese food or Italian. Mm -hmm. That's what that's I tell, I have to share with you that being an American, that's one thing I I I miss now that I'm in the Philippines. Well, two aspects. There is literally, if I want to go to a Senegalese restaurant in America, I can. I can have African food, any kind of Asian food. If I want to go to a Kazakhstani, Afghani restaurant, I can. In America, they have literally every kind of food possible. And in addition to that, almost everyone loves to prepare different styles of food. Japanese one night, and then make Italian, and then Mexican, and then American. You have a different kind of food every day. It's very normal in America. But I've noticed that in other countries, people don't do that. People just, they don't do that. They make their native country, style of food, and that's it. Here in the Philippines, people, I have to slowly indoctrinate, <laughs> brainwash my wife into trying different styles of food. I, I have to kind of trick her <laughs> or forget it. You know, she won't try it. She, I don't know. She's scared of it. It's not, oh, it's not Filipino, whatever. Oh, that's... It's different, so people are afraid of it. I think Americans have a much, much more open idea about food, for the most part. Generally, yeah. Yeah. they'll try anything. What's speaking of try anything? What's the strangest food you ever tried, Francisco? The strangest? Well, here in Mexico, we have a lot of strange food, uh, mostly in the south of the, of the country. There are weird, weird dishes. Okay. Uh, All right. I know uh, some some people eat uh, insects like ah. ants or or okay. some other grasshoppers. Grasshoppers. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, grasshoppers or or some other insects. Yeah. Uh, ants or or worms. Worms, ooh, worms, yum. Okay, have you ever tried any kind of insects or worms? Uh, not really. Not really. Come on, I, I admit it. Co cockroach. Oh, cockroach. <laughs> you laugh, but in China they really do eat cockroaches. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Ugh. I think that is. I love to experiment and try different things, but I think there's a limit. <laughs> yeah. And that may be the limit right there. I, okay, I, I don't think I can go there. Andreas, what, what is the strangest food you've ever tried before? Uh, ants. Ants, you tried ants. Uh, how yeah. interesting. Yeah. How were they yeah. prepared? Here, here in Colombia, there's a town called uh, Bucaramanga. And over there, you can find uh, a lot of places where you you can buy uh, ants wrap wrap wrapped in uh, fried ants uh, so it's uh, it tastes salty salty okay did you say wrapped what are they wrapped yeah, in yeah wrapped in, in in a bag it's like a snack <laughs> oh okay uh, i see <laughs> <laughs> they taste salty, yeah. really. Yeah, and they are salty, and they 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 taste so good. <laughs> okay. Does the does the does the, the, the weird the weird food I 
I ever taste. Okay. I ever do. I've had chocolate covered ants. They were they were good. And I've definitely had grasshoppers more than once, actually. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, they have grasshoppers here. It? It's a kind of a traditional dish here in the Philippines. It, what, what is the taste of the grasshopper? Is it salty or sweet? No, not sweet. Definitely not sweet. Uh, well, they they add a lot of garlic, so there's kind of that garlicky, hearty flavor. Um, but it's kind of salty too. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's more about the consistency. You know what I mean? So grasshopper, first it's crunchy, <laughs> and then you get but, to the squishy inside. <laughs> but but yeah, but it's cooked. Or it's fried. Fried the uh, grasshopper, fried or yeah, it's fried over very very high heat. Yeah, um, there's a style of food here, uh, at, where they 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 take a very thick metal pan, ki kind of pan, and they they cook it really hot, so it gets yeah. crispy on the on the edges. It's called seasick, and there's a number of kinds of seasick, and it's delicious and. You, it's served on a metal plate that's overall really hot. It's hot, hot fire. It's like red hot, and they cook it really fast, and then they drop an egg on it, which cooks like immediately. Wow. It's, it's, it's really, it's actually very good. It's considered um, a type of bar food. You, you, you eat it when you're drinking, usually. You can have it for dinner. It's, it's okay, but... There are a lot of foods here that are considered bar food. Do you have that concept in Colombia? Some foods that you're supposed to eat when you're drinking alcohol. Yeah. Yeah. For That's... example, yeah, yeah. Uh, like uh, beans. Uh, uh, like, uh, mm. Let me check your. I don't know. Uh, I don't know. I don't know about beans and beer. Sounds like uh, a lot of future. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, I, 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 I mean another, another. Um, uh, I don't know how to how to say that. Um, I don't know. Peanuts. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, it's it's uh, very useful. The people uh, eat p peanuts and ah uh, peanuts. Oh yeah, right. Well, yeah. well, he drinks. Well, well they drink. Uh, yeah. And uh, eat eat orange. Yeah, it's okay. useful to eat orange. Uh, uh, well, you drink. It's uh, okay. useful to 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 eat Doritos. Doritos. Yeah. Okay. Salty yeah. foods a lot. Yeah. 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 All right. yeah. Okay. I am definitely starving at this point. Of time. <laughs> we are out of time. It is my lunch time. It's actually an hour later than I normally eat lunch, so I'm very hungry. Thanks a lot, guys. Very fun.